Um, hello and welcome back to the Suzuki GP100 engine project. As you can see, I've kind of got quite a way through it. Um, over Christmas, me and my dad kind of put the, the engine back together and good news is the CDI ignition system actually works and produces a decent spark. Bad news is there's around about a quarter mil play on the piston to the cylinder bore. Now, my dad said he's seen a lot worse and they've ran. It's just going to be a bit rattly and I'm just going to be running at a tick over anyway so it's not going to be put under that much strain. And to be honest, I'm testing different oil ratios. Having that extra cleavance will help in somewhat preventing any seizures but I don't think I'm going to get to the point even if it was a tight bore of it seizing anyway. But anyway, getting on to it, as we can see I've actually built a a nice sturdy rig for it. It hasn't hasn't been finished yet as we can see I still have to cut out bits and bobs to allow for exhaust. I need to cut a bit off here to drop this mount down but all the mounting holes are in the right places and there's one behind the exhaust there so that should all be done. The only problem I have now is getting the tuning back. I really want some casters for just so I can wheel it backwards and forwards and maybe put a bit more strengthening. I want another bit of wood up here or strengthening strut or something just to give it a bit more integrity but to be honest it is pretty tough like but yeah all good <laughs> like I say I just need some casters of rubberized feet now going over the stuff on top here um, CDI units going to be mounted onto this little bit of the, the rig here now this doesn't actually need any earth on the body itself it actually gets its earth from the ignition coil it looks like so the ignition ignition coil has to be earthed to the frame like all you should know now normally it would be earthed above the cylinder head now because we don't actually have any gubbins over the top I'm going to have to try and f I want this to be stable so I don't know whether I should bring up a bit of wood up here connected onto this then via a bit of cable through the bolt that it's attached to or screw earth that to the engine which might be the way I'm going to go with it but um, that's all working anyway, it all kicks over, it all different. It's got decent compression action, but like I say, it's still got a lot of play. Um, carburetor all works, chokes all working, um, got all the cables freed off as well. Now, these um, three threaded rods here, I'm going to put a bit of wood over the top here with some holes in and feed these through, just so I've got like a nice thing to um, operate them from. As we can see, it all all works. So upper height, the clutch cable because it's actually meant to go straight to the handlebars, where the throttle cable actually goes into a two to one um, cable. Um, what? Um, well, two to one. One goes to the the oil there, and one goes to the thing. That's why it's um, so um, short. But this one just goes straight to the handlebars. So. I'll deal with it like, um, but yeah, um, fuel we're going to deal with because we actually are measuring it with a surgical syringe. Now, trying to find an accurate measuring device that people are willing for you to drill holes and stuff is pretty hard. So what I'm going to do is, because these actual surgical items are pretty accurate, they have to be for drugs and stuff, this, this one's actually for oil and enteral syringe. Oh, so it's, it's for oral feeding basically, that's what that one is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that to the end of here. And um, this fuel pipe's a bit rigid when it's cold, like when you warm it up it gets a bit, um, that and like mould it the way I want. But I was thinking about attaching this to the frame, but we all know single cylinder two strokes make a lot of vibration. So trying to get an accurate reading when it's wobbling around is going to be a bit of a bugger. So I'm going to have to try and put this on some side, either a separate rig or well um, isolated um, rubberized mount on the, the actual rig here. But um, I don't think I'm thinking I'm going to go separate with this one. It also has to be higher than the carburetor because it's just a gravity feed. Um, I'm going to have to drill a hole in the top of the plunger as well to let air through because I want to still have the plunger in there just to prevent an overly, if any vibration is happening to prevent fuel from overflowing out of the syringe which health and safety in the uni and all that you know they don't like fuel being spilt over the floor for some absurd reason I don't know why but yeah that's my fuel tank now another thing I'm also going to be doing is this orange pipe here 
was this actually attaches on the oil feed at the back of the carburetor which would have been there but because we're running the oil direct through the fuel um, we don't need this no more so what I was going to do was just basically put this on and bend the pipe just to nip it up so it was airtight <coughs> but I had a thought another reading I could actually take which was a hassle before because I didn't have anywhere to take it from was the actual pressure going through the carburetor now what I would do is I would have this on a separate rig because there's a good bit I think it's a metre long um, pipe this and basically if I can get some clear pipe put it in a U bend so make it in a U shape like that block one end up so that would be atmospheric pressure then leave the other end open to this pipe here which leads back to the carb we should see little um, the, the actual water or liquid moving depending on how much um, negative pressure is within this pipe now you would do this when um, I was thinking if I can get a millimetre pipe I'll be able to read it in millimetres of H2O or even smaller pipe for my more accurate readings but um, I don't know if I'm going to go through with that but it's just an idea and to be honest I think it would be pretty good just to see but yeah <coughs> other than that it's come, uh, coming together pretty alright um, all I have to do now like I say is do a few more modifications to the the rig itself and then it's just time to get it fired, put some fuel in and kick it over and see how it goes. Um, I was debating whether to do it here or not, but people in flats and um, student accommodation who pay the price they do for this bloody place, um, would I think they would complain a bit having a two-stroke starting up in their forecourt, so I think I'll leave that until I get back down to uni, but anyway. And another thing I'm hoping, because this is a CGI ignition, um, there's two points. There's a point on the engine case and on the other side and there's also a little mark on the stator back which I'm hoping all the timing points because I've actually forgot to bring my timing gear up but because it's a CDI unit the ignition shouldn't really wear. Well it wouldn't wear, it wouldn't go out of time so everything should be set. So hopefully that is something I don't have to deal with but anyway everything's good. Um, exhaust all mount, well nearly mounted up like I say need to sorted out some matches up with there but it's all good it's all coming together now <laughs> now we just have to run it which should be a very interesting video <laughs> and I sh hopefully should be doing that shortly in the next few weeks or so depending if I can get down in uni and get time in the labs but anyway I shall leave you with that um, keep safe like always and I shall see you